Yeah, folks, we're in Tennessee. Uh, boy, I tell you, you would not know there was a coronavirus. Oh, let me get my coffee going around. I've never seen so many people. Nope, nobody had masks on or anything in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. The streets were just packed all. Looked like everything was open. I mean, the hotels looked packed and so, I mean, and that's the way it should be, you know. People, leave people to their own devices if they want to take a chance. Uh, you know, most people getting sick with it. Heck, I've already made an 80 year old that, and his wife and both of them got comorbidities, or co comorbidities, excuse me. And uh, they, they did just fine. So I just wanted to talk about the trip while I drink my coffee. Anyway, I had that horrible night, you know, of course, in uh, Bankhead, and then I could have gone to another campground, but I was just tired of the heat, you know, camping there in Florida. I said, well, let's get up in the mountains. Uh, at least I'll have some cool weather. And it was, it was cool, but gosh, it was humid. Again, I can't get out of the humidity. I can't get out of the rain. That's the problem with traveling this time of the year. I knew it was going to be rough, but I just didn't think it would just be one groundhog day after after another i mean it's challenging me to the max uh, so let's just give you the story so i get here i got here early made sure because i wanted to hit the ranger station and uh, i got a nice trail map of the whole park um so but i'm just going to stay local and do some day hikes because uh, i got to get everything dried out and then get prepared for the rain so and then i've got a good book i'm just going to sit in the tent and read you know and there's nothing wrong with that i mean it's not the trip i had planned but you know, today we'll get some exercise, but you know, if I got I'm living out of the car, all this stuff has to go into the car before I take off, uh, which means I can't leave it out to dry. You know, normally I'd have it up on the clothesline and then go off and do my thing, but uh, so I get here, you know, I'm talking to the Rangers and I'm telling them I'm going to, so I want to go to Sugar Cove eventually. Sugar Cove? What's that? I said, well, it's a primitive camping area. There's 10 camping sites there. Well, I don't know, that must be backcountry. I said, well, yeah, I suppose. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if there's campsites there. I mean, how backcountry could it be? Because you can drive your car in, right? And, uh, well, we don't know anything about that. I'm like, gosh dang, you're a ranger working in the park and you don't even know where all the camping is. All they know is just the main camping areas. So I just, I don't get it. How, did he, how do you have that job and not know anything? Um, so they, and then they sent me, you know, so I couldn't pay. I was gonna pay at the ranger station. And uh, they're like, well, no, you got to use recreation.gov. I said, well, I don't, you know, I'm not real savvy with a cell phone. And uh, I said, I don't want to, plus you, they always want you to download an app. And then they want you to grant access to everything. You know, everybody wants your data. Everybody wants your information. And I'm just not, I'm, I'm a private person. So I don't install all these apps on my phone. Everybody goes, well, get the trail app. You know, well, I don't need a trail app. I got a trail map, you know. Um, now I do use Google uh, to to navigate. Now it, it does. It's gotten a lot better, by the way. It actually warned me on the way up of where a couple of speed traps were. I guess they've integrated with Waze. I'm sure you're familiar with Waze. So I think Google's integrating the two. And so now with Google, I, I always used Google. I mean, my life, wife uses Waze. But what happened to me with Waze is it would go out, and it doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't say you know losing connection. And then you know, so you're driving along thinking, oh, you know, I'm waiting for the next turn on the phone, and next thing you know. You're, you're, you know you're off course and you're going like what happened and you look at the phone and the, the app is you know it's disconnected it's just not even running and you're like oh, no no warning no nothing but that's what happened to me with Waze that's why I use Google I haven't had that problem with Google although Google has taken me to the middle of a field um, but back to the trip so so they sent me they said well you can probably pay at the park you know so I had to drive I came in on one side of the park I had to drive all the way across and so now I'm losing time you know it's getting to be about 435 530 somewhere around in there so I pulled all the way in it's a long drive to get into this park and i get to the little station there's three people working there now what the hell are they doing i guess they're just sitting there at the at the uh the main gate and uh and they're like well you know um i said well you know i'd like to go ahead and get a site i said you mind if i go in and look at them and then i'll pick one and then come back and tell you where i'm going to stay well no 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 you can't do that what, what do you mean i can't well you can ride in but we can't take your money well what about a credit card Oh, we, we can't take a credit card. You gotta go to recreation.gov and book your site. I said, well, why? I said, why can't you take the money? Well, that's, that's because of the virus, we're not allowed. Now, who the hell made that decision? What's it gonna hurt them to take a credit card and run it right there at the gate? Now, here's, here's what I think. 
I think it's a big brother. They want, because that app, I had to, I finally had to, well, what I had to do, because there's no cell phone connection in here, I had to drive all the way out the damn park, get up on the road, you know, wait till I got a little bit of a signal. And then, you know, of course, in the meantime, I called, there's a number you can call. I was just going to book it by calling. We're sorry, due to the COVID virus, there's a 45 minute wait time for you to be able to book a reservation. <laughs> What? So now I'm figuring, what a choice have I got? I got to download the damn app, you know? Well, in the meantime, I got the phone on hold. I thought, well, whichever one I gets done first, that's the one I'll, I'll do. So I'm working on downloading the app, and of course I've got no, hardly this, this much signal, and so it takes forever to download. And uh, now I got it on my phone, and then they want your name, your, your, your blood type, I'm just kidding, but I mean every, every little piece of your email address and all this crap. You know, I, what I'm thinking, I mean, it, I guess it does make you safer. I imagine convicted felons are not gonna go to a, a national forest campground now, you know, because they got to enter all their personal information. And I, but those guys have got fake IDs, so they probably have fake identities. So it's, what good is it doing to collect everybody's information other than, you know, where I guess we're gonna give it to the Chinese at some point. Um, that's what we're doing with, uh, you know, Zoom and uh, TikTok and all these other apps. You know, the Chinese are gathering all their information. I mean, I'm expecting Red Dawn. The Chinese are gonna come in here and they'll have everybody's information and know exactly where to go for, you know, if they want camping gear, they'll come to my house or whatever. So now, you know, the time's getting away from me. And I told you, there's, there's a couple of things you don't want when you're, when you're camping. You don't want to set up in the rain. You can't do it. You don't want to uh, set up in the dark. Um, well, you know, like I said, I used to shine the headlights. I'd learned my lesson on that. Don't shine the headlights. <laughs> you can't. Plus, you couldn't do it here anyway. The car's way down there. So, uh, so you know, all I'm, all I'm going to be working with is a headlamp. All right. So I, I get the tent out. You know, it's, it hasn't rained yet, and I'm, I'm running out of time. It's getting dark. I'm like, oh, son of a gun, I got to hurry up. So I get the tent, and I, you know, I'd unzipped it. Now, the way this tent works is you have to completely unzip one side of the tent to get the poles in it. You know, I kind of showed you how you had to unzip it. So you got this huge opening. Well, no sooner did I get it unzipped and I got the, 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 uh, the, the mat down or the poncho underneath it, I mean, it came in and it came in fast. It, I mean, 60 seconds, it was pouring down rain. I, I'd say within, I didn't even have, I had, there was no way I could get the tent in the car to keep it dry. The only thing, I had the pillows sitting on the table and I had the uh, my sleeping mat sitting on the table. So I snatched up all that stuff. And I, of course, I'm getting wet and I'm running to the car and I just threw it all in the car and I just left the tent out. Well, now, you know, finally it quit raining about, <clears throat> I don't know, 10 o'clock last night or so. And uh, so now I'm up here in the dark. I don't want to sleep in the car. I, I can't sleep in the car. It just, so I'm up here and I'm putting the tent up and luckily I had a couple towels in the car. And so I'm, once I got the tent up, I'm jumping all the water out and everything. Now, he, you know, here's the sad thing. I told you I spent two weeks preparing that tent for rain. Well, I didn't prepare it for rain on the inside of the tent. <laughs> I prepared it for rain on the outside of the tent. So, so they completely messed me up with this whole, you know, registering online. And you know, this is how trips go. I mean, it's frustrating and you know, thank God I went through anger management. You know, I, I analyzed why they want you to use recreation.gov and that was because they want, they want your data, they want your personal information. I think that's bull crap, you know? So that's how the trip's going. Rain tonight, rain tomorrow, rain the next day. I, I don't know, if I could get a chance on Sunday, I might just pack up and I'll let them keep the money. You know, $7.50, it's just, it just ain't worth it, I can't. I can't leave stuff out at the site. I can't let everything dry and it, you're just gonna be wet and, and moist and miserable the whole time you're here. So that's my synopsis of the trip. I got my, oh, this is, uh, I wanted to show you. This is, this is funny. Remember in the first video I was complaining how we're still using ounces and cups and stuff like that, you know? Well, I forgot my cooking pots and liters, <laughs> which I mean, I bought that years ago. Even back then, most people were converting over to metric. I don't know why we're not using metric. So I'm guess I had to guesstimate what a cup and a half of water was, and, uh, and then what you want to do is you got to kind of swish it around. You know, right now the water's in there. I got to let it sit. They say eight minutes. I let it sit about 15 because you know there's nothing worse than getting that dried food on your tongue. You know, you want to make sure everything gets soaks it up really, really well. So that's uh, and you know how simple is that? You just boil water. And, 
put it in there. Now these are getting hard to find, man. You know, you can't, uh, you can't order them anymore. I, I guess they're just backed up. Most people are getting survival food. Um, well, oh, and the batteries are, you know, they're still charging, so they need definitely needed a charge if they were um, charged up. And I noticed the radio batteries, I'll probably put those on there too and get those charged up. Uh, you heard the sound quality, that's why I wanted you to hear that. Um, I guess that's that's about it. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, the other thing, you know, coming through Alabama, uh, I you know I just kind of want to get a feel because I'm not trying to get political with this, but I've never seen so many Trump signs. I mean, I would say Trump's got a lock on Alabama. <laughs> I never saw a Biden sign, not one. But of course, I was in rural Alabama. I'm sure in the cities it's probably different. Same thing here in Tennessee. You know, I don't know, but uh, I don't even know if Tennessee's a red state or a blue state. I, but uh, not, nothing but Trump signs everywhere I go. Um, and then, of course, it, like I said, you wouldn't know the coronavirus is around here because last night, you know, because of the rain, I just wanted to listen to the radio. So I'm going from station to station, and Friday night, that's uh, high school football, right? Well, you know, I'm hearing this debate in other places about, you know, oh, should they play football? And college, should we play college football? No, man. Every other station was football, 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 football. They're playing football here. I'm going to tell you, high school football, I think there might have been, I'm not sure, no, I guess there wasn't any college games because it was a Friday night, but I mean, they're, they're, I, you know, football, I guess, is really big in Tennessee. I never really thought about it because I, I, I just come through here, you know, most time just driving through. But uh, yeah, so they're, they're not too worried about uh, young people getting sick here, and uh, and they probably shouldn't be. It sounds to me like very few of them get get really sick it's just a mild case of the flu for them and then it's over with and then they're immune so i don't know why we're making a big deal out of this virus but uh luckily they're not here so come to tennessee if you're locked up in new york no no don't do that because then you'll vote blue and turn the state into a democratic state and then they'll have it locked down so that people can't play football <laughs> all right man just in my little political stuff all right <clears throat>